Well, welcome back to the Mountain Top Repair Shop. Um, today's episode, we're working on the Nord Electro 6D. My new keyboard, well, it's uh, not brand new, it's uh, almost a year old, maybe. But, unfortunately, the OLED screen already went in it. I heard some bad things about OLED screens, and surely enough, one day, I turn this thing on and it's barely glowing. You can't even make anything out on the screen. And so... I started looking around online, not finding any information. I figured, well, I'm gonna have to take it apart. So I guess that means it's time to tear apart a Nord Electro 6D. Here we are. First up, we'll turn it on and see how it's doing at this point. It's been about four weeks and the screen is deteriorating and getting darker. Not surprising, today there was virtually nothing being displayed when the power was turned on. At least the LEDs work. Well, it's gotten worse every time I turned it on, and I've been dealing with this for about a month now. Now we're going to have to figure out which screws are necessary to remove this front panel. There appears to be some evenly spaced screws on the back. We'll remove those first. Next, I'll remove the screws on the wooden side panels. It seems to be attached to the back center, so let's flip it over and take a look. There's one screw that attaches to a standoff that supports the middle of the control panel. These other nicely spaced out screws hold the key bed to the base. I want to leave that attached. It isn't anything that needs to be removed to complete this repair. Now things are kind of moving the way I want them to. With that screw removed, the main panel and the side panels come off as one complete assembly. There is a ribbon cable that's still attached. The socket has two clips that fold down and outwards. They have tabs under the socket that actually push the ribbon cable out when you release them. It's not unlike a computer RAM socket. We can put the base aside and focus on removing the control board from the main panel. All knobs must be removed including the organ slide pot knobs. These are on really well, so I used a small curved tool to help pry them up. This little device helps a lot. Got a little curve to it for some prying action. We will remove all of the screws that hold down the control board. We also need to remove the two screws that hold the standoff that mounts to the base of the keyboard. These two screws are longer, and each has a washer between the standoff and the circuit board. This one gets uh, washers. Cool. Now we can remove the control panel board and have a look at this OLED display. When I did a cursory search for um, a screen, I couldn't really come up with anything, and uh, so I decided to tear the keyboard apart. and. Uh, See if I could find uh, some part numbers, maybe on the circuit board, uh, maybe find uh, you know a parts list online, just so I could get the uh, model number for the OLED screen. Now, when I did a search for a Nord Electro OLED replacement screen, I was pretty surprised when all of a sudden I was brought to Centaur Synths. Seriously, Centaur. I'm not surprised. I could get any knob, any button, anything I needed for this keyboard. The OLED screen was on the list. Cool! Right from Sam Mims himself. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Well, looks like we can do this after all. Uh, I guess we better get started. First off, 
safely put this someplace else. Nice close look at this. This this thing has no power, yet those things are lit up. Looking closely at this old display, we can see that there is still something being shown on the display despite the fact that it has no power. Well, we'll need a soldering iron, but we're not actually soldering anything. Uh, that's a ribbon cable right there, so... But it has four studs in the back of it. And look at the back of the board here, you can see that um, they just, you know, push the studs through and then melt them. Kind of, a, kind of like a plastic rivet, so I'll have to do the same thing with this. So, a soldering iron shouldn't get hot enough to damage a circuit board, so I think that that's probably the proper tool to do the job. But to get this off, I think some fine snips that can get nice and close. Alright, so I guess we'll start with trying to remove a little bit of this back. I use the wire cutters to trim back the melted studs from the old display. This should make it easier to remove. It's actually working pretty well. I think that we should be able to just poke them through with something slightly pointy. Hmm. This thing's kind of pointy. Might as well try this. Oh, yeah. And there it comes loose. Hanging by a cable. Big surprise. Oh, look at the back of that. Look how it's all burned in. The display has been dismounted from the control board. We can slide back the compression retainer and the ribbon cable will slide out of the retainer with ease. You can see the OLED grid on the back. Each square cell is essentially a light. It seems that some of the OLED cells are damaged. You can see how they are brighter and somewhat singed. <laughs> Yeah, nothing on one, all burned up on the other. First up, we need to attach the ribbon cable to the socket. Sliding the cable in and closing the compression fitting is a little tricky. The ribbon cable is now secure on the socket. It folds into an S-shape as we put the display bezel in the circuit board. I'll melt one of the studs just to hold it in place for a test. <laughs> These melt studs are a one-time use, so I need to test it and be sure it's plugged in properly. If it works, I can melt the other studs into place. So one holding in place temporary so we can plug this thing in and see just what happens. It works! It's nice to see the screen again. It was a rough month and a half. I gotta say, this is quite a relief. This was a large investment and a very useful tool and I was just floored when I saw the screen failing for the first time. Now we can melt the other three studs and get the display completely secured. One time use rivets. I gotta say, the last rivets lasted longer than the last screen. So, it's laying flat, flush against the board. It goes right up to the case, so it has to be mounted just right. Well, reassembly time. <laughs> it smells like burnt plastic over here. Yeah, I didn't see these little arrow columns beforehand. Apparently this black part is separate, but it goes over. There are a few arrow-shaped light diffusers 
that have a black bezel that they fit into. I'll put those in place first. For some reason, they don't fall off when you hold the control board upside down. It's a good thing, because this is the easiest way to put the control board back on the main panel. First, I'm going to remove this protective film, since this little peel-off tab might get caught under the control panel. I don't want to be poking a new screen with tweezers, trying to get that film off of there. There are a lot of potentiometer stems and LEDs that need to line up with the main panel. Once they fall into place, we can screw that control board to the panel. All those little LED diffusers need to fall into the right space or things aren't going to line up just right. This board needs to be tight and flush against things. It feels good, I'm going to put some screws in and then flip it over. <laughs> All right, let the fast mode begin. We can place the two washers for the metal standoff right on the circuit board. Well, these two screws are longer. And then screw the standoff in place with the two slightly longer screws. Next up, we need to plug back in the control board ribbon cable. Alright, that is on. All done by hand. No drill drivers here. Not today, anyways. Now the reinstallation of all the case screws. Standoff doesn't quite line up right, so I'm just going to try to move it a little bit so I can get the screw in there. That did it. And one more test before I replace all the knobs and slider caps. Ha ha, that's nice. Nice to see words there again. Now it's time to load this thing full of fun sounds I downloaded. Now we can put on the finishing touches. Right, repair complete. Well, there we have it. We can see once again. I can go to any parameter and make any change and see just what I'm doing. I'm pretty pleased. The Nord Electro 6D can once again tell us what's on its mind. So I'd like to thank Sam Mims and the good people at Centaur Synths. Thank you guys for having everything I've needed so far for the Vintage Synth series and the Modern Synth series, which I didn't know I was even going to be doing. I think it's time to take this thing, pack it up, and uh, go on the road and play a little tune. So join us next time, and if you like this content, feel free to like and subscribe. I uh, really appreciate that. We'll be making more videos, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm.